Hi, in this video, we're taking a look at chapter four of my book, Audit Risk Assessment Made Easy. And the title of this chapter is Gaining an Understanding of the Entity and Its Environment. You know, until we understand the background, the context of the business, it's just about impossible to perform an audit. So we need to understand uh, what's going on, what's the chemistry of the business, say how much competition there is, uh, what's the motivation of the owners, what, what are they after, what's the motivation of management, how healthy is the entity, uh, if it's a non-profit, are they meeting their objectives, if it's a government, or they bringing in, say, property taxes at an appropriate amount. So we want to understand the context of the entity and the industry in which it operates before we do the audit. So this whole series is about the risk of material misstatement. So this is a chapter that's more general in nature but until you understand the nature and chemistry of the business, it's hard to understand where the risk of material misstatement might occur. So let's go through the slides here and take a look at what we need to know about the business before we get into other things such as preliminary analytics and internal control documentation. Let's understand the nature of the business and the industry as we begin. Now, the first thing I want you to think about is business risk. So what is business risk? You know, business risk is the risk that an entity will not meet its objective. So as you're having these early conversations, you're asking you know, what are the objectives of your organization? What are the primary things that you're trying to achieve? Now, I'll give you a little uh, trick. I say trick. I'll give you a little practice that I use in trying to determine business risk is I simply read the minutes. So if you've got an entity that keeps good minutes, a lot of times you're going to see what the objectives are of the business. Sometimes you'll see certain metrics that are tracked in the minutes month after month. Well, that'll tell you what they're trying to achieve. Or you might see more general type objectives discussed, and you can see those in the minutes. So one thing you, you'll want to do as you look at uh, potential business risk as you gain an understanding of the entity is read the minutes in addition to have an interview say with the chief executive officer or the chief financial officer. Now on this slide you'll see that some nonprofits might have a goal of securing a large grant and this is just an example of, of business risk, say, in a not-for-profit. But let's say they have a goal of obtaining a $5 million grant, but that grant acceptance is dependent upon meeting certain criteria, such as feeding, in this example, 5,000 homeless people, whatever the metric is in the grant. You know, once you've got that objective, okay, I need to feed 5,000 people, and let's say they actually feed 4,000, and they're like, oops, we didn't meet our objective. That's a business risk. So you could have the potential for fraud in the grant area for this not-for-profit. So even nonprofits, which are generally good in nature, can have fraud uh, based on what their objectives are. Now, they may rationalize and say to themselves, well, I need this grant in order to feed other homeless people. Well, that's fine, but you just need to understand what the objectives are of the entity, in this case, a not-for-profit. 
to in order that you can focus on the risk of material misstatement we you know when we gain the understanding of the entity this is not just some disconnected exercise we need to know the context the chemistry the mission of the organization so that we know where the risk of material misstatement is highest. So in my initial interviews, say with the chief executive officer, and I've done this several times through the years, uh, whoever that key person is that you're interviewing, you might ask the following questions. And I have found these quite helpful through the years. So one thing I'll ask is if you had a magic wand and you could wave the magic wand over, the, over your business, what three things would you change? And you'll see them lean back in the chair and say, hey, that's a good question. And, and you, you, I usually get really good responses here. And these re responses are very revealing about what's most important in that person's heart of hearts. Another question I might ask is, what keeps you awake at night? So in the last year, when you were struggling to sleep, if that happened, what was it that kept, kept you from a good night's rest? Other business risk questions. What's the most, what is most important in your business? So if you're going to pick one thing, what's the most important thing? What metrics do you follow? They might be looking at inventory turnover, for example. They might look at net income each month, for example. So what are the metrics that management and those charged with governance are paying particular attention to for this, this entity? Another question is, and I like this one, if you own the entire business, so you were talking to the chief executive officer and let's say 50 people own the business. But I would say to the chief executive officer, if you own the entire business, what would you change? And, it, you know, sometimes they'll tell you what they would change, and that will highlight a potential problem area in the business that might have a connection to your risk of material misstatement. In understanding the entity, you want to know how much debt they have, you know, what are the receivables, what are the payables, what's the current ratio, how, how, much revenue or, how much revenue are they generating, what about expenses, what about cash flows from operations, what about key competitors, it, it, are there one or two businesses that are really giving your client a hard time in terms of market share. What about uh, key suppliers? So recently with the pandemic, we've had issues, significant issues with the supply chain and you wanna see are they having problems getting the goods that they, they need to say manufacture inventory in their business. So. Who are the key suppliers for this entity? Now, you know, if you're like me, a lot of this information, I can go to the prior year audit report, scan the balance sheet, the income statement, cash flow statements, look at key disclosures, and it'll give me a good understanding of the business simply by doing that. But you still want to talk about these issues with your client. Now, one thing to keep in mind as you're doing all of this is all of your risk assessment work is scalable. In other words, you can decrease the amount of questions you're asking if the entity is simple, then you don't need to go into as much detail. But the more complex the, the business is or the entity is, the more questions you need to ask 
and the, the, the greater depth you need to go into in understanding the entity and its environment. Now another thing to think about in gaining an understanding of the entity is understanding the industry in which they work. So some entities are heavily regulated, uh, such as electric membership corporations. So you might have RUS or, or some other f federal regulator looking at what's going on in that entity. If there are agencies, federal agencies or state agencies that are regulating your business, then you want to pay attention to those uh, regulatory rules. You also want to pay attention to what's going on within the industry. Let's say you have a technology company that you're auditing and, you know, and they're manufacturing and selling some type of new computer. You know, so if you look at the industry, there may not be much competition or, at all, or there might be a lot of competition, but you want to know what's going on within the industry. If it's a healthcare entity, then you're looking at uh, profitability within the type of healthcare entity you're looking at. If it's a hospital, you got different dynamics, say, than continuing care or, or a nursing home. So you want to know the industry and the type of entity that you're auditing. Again, why are we doing this? So we have context for determining the risk of material misstatement. Now, once you gain the understanding of the entity, then when you're done with this, if you note any potential risk of material misstatement, then you want to bring those onto your risk assessment summary form. And you're going to see the same slide in future videos because at the end of every chapter in this book, I'm basically saying if you identify a risk of material misstatement as you do this part of the audit, then bring that, ri that risk into the risk assessment summary form. We said in an earlier video that we're trying to create a complete picture, a complete portrait of the risk assessment picture for this client. So we're using things like gaining an understanding of the entity and its environment to bring together the disparate pieces of risk, the risk of material misstatement. We're bringing that together, compiling it together on the risk assessment summary form so we know where to do our work. So in this video, we've said that you need to understand the business risk, know what the objectives are of the entity that you're auditing, and then you need to understand particulars such as the debt level, uh, what are the equity or net worth balances of the company, what about the cash flows of the company? What about the industry in which it operates? As you gain this background information, you're going to have the context to plan your audit procedures and perform your risk assessment procedures also. But this is a really important part. It feels kind of intangible, but it's really important as a context for developing your audit plan. In the next chapter of the book, we're going to take a look in chapter five at entity level controls. So join us next time. Until then, I bid you Godspeed and have a good day. Bye now.